It's nearly two years on from the bloody, months-long crackdown by Iran's security forces on protesters taking to the streets over the death of Masa Aminin, a 22-year-old woman who died after being arrested by Iran's morality police over allegedly improperly wearing her hijab, or headscarf. More than 500 people were killed and over 22,000 were detained during the action. Since then, Iran has put to death multiple protesters who were detained in the crackdown and accused of killing security forces, after closed-door trials criticized by activists abroad. Iran's Supreme Court has upheld a death sentence imposed on a member of the all-volunteer wing of the country's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard who stormed a house during the 2022 protests over the death of Masa Amini and killed a 60-year-old man, a lawyer said in early September. The sentence imposed on the Basage member marks a rare moment for Iran to hold accountable its security forces. In Tehran, women are routinely seen without their mandatory headscarves, or hijabs, in protest of a law mandating them. Police have begun detaining and fining women again, but there hasn't been an incident of abuse to spark new nationwide protests. It's the second anniversary of the death in Iran of Masa Amini. Amini was a 22-year-old woman who was detained by Iran's morality police in Tehran, allegedly over not wearing her headscarf or hijab to their liking. The headscarf is mandatory in Iran under the law. Now, UN investigators say that her death is a direct result of her arrest by Iranian security forces, and after her death, there were months of protests that challenged Iran's theocracy and challenged the mandatory hijab law. Activists say that in that time, a heavy-handed security force crackdown killed over 500 people and saw 22,000 others arrested. <laughs> Now, in the time since, Iran initially said that it was going to stop these police patrols, stop detaining women over their headscarves. But months after the protests ended, Iranian police came back out with what they called the Noor or light plan, where they would go out and start detaining women, talking to women again over their headscarves. We have seen footage in Tehran of women being physically uh, manhandled, assaulted by police over their hijab. Now, Iranian police haven't offered any details over how many people have been detained, but we do know that thousands of cars have been impounded. We believe that Iran is using surveillance cameras to track women who are driving without their hijab. And that also led to what activists say was the death of a young woman in northern Iran who fled a police checkpoint. The police apparently had a notice out for her car over a hijab violation. We have seen reformist President Masoud Pazeshkian become the leader of Iran. He ran on a platform that criticized these arrests, detentions by police, and these physical altercations, playing on the idea that it was the Noor plan. He called it the darkness plan. But so far, Zeshkian hasn't really faced any death or major example of mistreatment by police of young women in Tehran or elsewhere. So it's unclear exactly what he would do if something like that happened. He has to still exist within the theocracy of Iran, which is overseen at the top by Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei.
Something interesting that's been seen in the last few months is it's a widening pattern of women choosing not to wear the hijab. Now, in the past, that was largely in northern Tehran. That's home to the elite, to the wealthy in Iranian society. And a lot of those women were part of that initial protest over Masa Amini. But we're also starting to see more women in southern Tehran not wearing the hijab. Now, southern Tehran is home to working poor, um, some lower middle class families, as well as people who more closely follow Shi Islam. So the fact that there's this pushback is a really interesting sign on where society is going when it comes to the mandatory hijab. For Iran's theocracy, they viewed the mandatory hijab since the 1979 Islamic Revolution as a sign of piety as well as a political statement. They view the hijab as showing the West that is standing up against what Ayatollah Khamenei as well as others have described as sort of encroaching Western culture. But Iranian society today has more avenues to sort of have exposure to the wider world, whether that be broadcast on satellite dishes, whether that be access to the internet and Western movies, Western television programs, uh, news shows, they can see the outside world and this pushback over the hijab is continuing. And again, we haven't seen any real physical crackdown yet, but for the Iranian theocracy, they're having to weigh exactly how far they're willing to push this against the, the fear that we could see renewed protests challenging its Islamic government.